Imagine a sky over the Pacific in 1943, thick with engine smoke and fear. American P-38 Lightnings are diving and twisting above blue waves, chasing swift Japanese Zero fighters. The P-38 is heavy and fast, with twin engines humming like a thunderstorm. The Zero is light and agile, turning on a dime like a hummingbird. In the first seconds, you hear machine gun fire and smell hot oil, and the narrator tells you a secret. One mechanic's stupid wire trick turned this fight upside down. Why would a piece of wire change the course of aerial combat? Early P-38 pilots respected the Zero's nimbleness and dreaded turning battles. The Lightning was designed by Lockheed for high speed and long range, not for tight turns, but in the South Pacific pilots needed to dogfight or die. They had power and firepower. The Zero had maneuverability and climb. Men like Richard Bong and Thomas Maguire, America's top aces, had learned to climb out of a turn rather than try to match the Zero. Against the backdrop of coral reefs and mangrove swamps, aerial tactics became a matter of life or death. The smell of fuel mixed with the salt air as ground crews looked up, listening to the whine of superchargers. Then came a miracle of sorts. It did not come from a scientist with degrees or a general with stars, but from a crew chief with grease on his hand. On a remote island airstrip, while servicing a P-38, a mechanic noticed that the flaps, those hinge panels on the wings used for landing, had an effect on how the plane responded in flight. Pilots knew flaps were to be used only at low speed for takeoff and landing. In combat, they kept them tucked away. But this mechanic had seen pilots accidentally bump the flap lever and feel the aircraft jump. What if, he wondered, lowering the flaps just a little could increase lift and allow the heavy P-38 to turn tighter? Could a simple wire hold the flaps in place? He improvised. In the sweltering heat, with mosquitoes buzzing and the smell of damp canvas tents in the air, he took a length of stainless safety wire from the toolbox and fashioned a loop. He attached the wire to the flap control lever in the cockpit, then ran it to a convenient point on the seat frame. It looked absurdly simple. The pilot could pull the lever to lower the flaps a few degrees, and the wire would hold it there without constant effort. This way, the pilot could fly with partial flaps, about eight degrees, during a dogfight. When the pilot returned, he smiled. The P-38 had turned sharper, almost dancing on the wingtip. Could this small hack be the key to beating the Zero? Test flights began. Pilots like Tony Levia, Lockheed's legendary test pilot, had already experimented with lowering the flaps during turns and reported improved handling. In combat, though, holding the lever down while pulling heavy G-forces was not practical. The wire solved that. Imagine climbing into the cockpit, strapping in, and feeling that wire under your fingers as you push forward the throttle. Your ears fill with the growl of Allison engines, your nose with the scent of fuel and leather. You pull the wire taut, lower the flaps a hair, and feel the P-38 respond, like a stallion suddenly freed. The heavy fighter now arcs through the sky in a tighter circle, matching the Zero's turn. The Japanese pilots see this strange twin-boom plane staying with them and are astonished. At a remote atoll, pilots of the 475th Fighter Group made this their secret weapon. In logbooks, they wrote eighth flaps and wire hack, passing the trick from one crew to another. In ready rooms, they talked about the talk the feeling of the aircraft biting into the air. Combat reports soon showed results. On 7th November 1943, near Rabaul, a flight of P-38s engaged a swarm of Zeros. Using the wire trick, the Americans lured the enemy into turning fights and shot down several Zeros. The pilot spoke of a feeling like surfing away. The P-38 kept its speed and yet turned with grace. How could a simple piece of wire make professional pilots feel like magicians? The trick did have limits. Pilots had to monitor their speed if they flew too fast with flaps lowered, they risked structural damage. They had to pull the wire before entering a turn and release it before diving. But as they practiced, the wire became part of their instinct. Sensory memories anchored the habit, the sight of coral reefs passing under the wing, the taste of sweat mixing with chewing gum, the vibration of the control column. They knew that the wire gave them a chance to survive. Stories spread throughout the Pacific. Squadron newsletters mentioned a P-38 flap gadget that was making pilots smile. Mechanics in New Guinea and the Philippines copied the idea, customising each aircraft with slight variation. Some used two wires for redundancy, some added small springs to ease control. Commanders noticed fewer aircraft lost and more enemy kills. Could such an informal modification really change the statistics of the air war? The myth grew. Some called it a combat flap. Others whispered of the magic wire. Pilots returning to the United States for rest told journalists about a trick that made the P-38 outturn anything in the Pacific. The narrative took on an almost mystical tone, as if the wire itself possessed power. In reality, it was an example of frontline innovation born out of necessity. It reveals a truth about war. Ingenuity is often found where you least expect it. How many other stories of small hacks change the outcome of battles?
At approximately 350 words, we pause and reflect. Think about the engineer at Lockheed drawing the P-38 sleek twin boom, and then think of a mechanic on a muddy strip, pushing a wire into the flap lever. The distance between design and operation is bridged by human creativity. The wire trick is also a reminder that official manuals can be wrong. Sometimes, breaking the rules within safety margins is what saves lives. Shouldn't we honour these unsung innovators as much as aces? What did the Japanese pilots think? Survivors later reported surprise. Their training had taught them that American fighters could not match the zero in a circle. When a P-38 suddenly stayed on their tail, they felt disoriented. The zero was still lighter and would prevail in very slow turns but the P-38's extra lift and speed from partial flaps gave the Americans the edge they needed. On the ground, captured Japanese documents revealed that pilots were instructed to avoid extended turning fights with lightnings. The wire trick had forced a change in enemy tactic. That is the definition of a good innovation. It forces your opponent to rethink. Combat conditions were brutal. Pilots flew for hours over open water, watching for the glint of sunlight on enemy wing. They grappled with heat in the cockpit, the smell of their own sweat, and the tension of knowing that a failure could send them into the sea. They talked about their families back home, shared jokes, and sometimes wrote letters between missions. The wire trick became part of their camaraderie. They teased each other about who needed more wire, who had the best installation. A simple hack became a symbol of resilience. Another mini story, one pilot recounted how the wire once saved him when his left engine failed over the Bismarck Sea. He deployed partial flaps with the wire, keeping control as his aircraft yawed violently. He limped back to base and kissed the ground upon landing. The crew chief who had installed the wire received a handshake and a bottle of beer. Those moments, unrecorded by official history, tell of gratitude born from ingenuity. Why do some small gestures matter more than medals? As the war progressed, manufacturers took notice. Lockheed engineers retrofitted later models with a more refined control, a notched flap lever that would hold the flaps at the desired angle without a wire. They also introduced dive recovery flaps to cure compressibility problems at high speed. But the field installed wires continued to be used, even as official modifications arrived. It was not until after the war that the story of the wire trick emerged in interviews and memoirs. Veterans smiled when they recounted the stupid hack that made the lightning dance. What can we learn from this? First, that innovation can come from anyone. The crew chief's name may be lost to history, but his idea saved lives and influenced aircraft design. Second, that small adjustments can yield massive results. Changing the angle of a flap by eight degrees with a piece of wire changed the performance envelope of a fighter. Third, that stories matter. When veterans tell their tales, they remind us that war is not only about generals and strategies, but about mechanics, grease, and human ingenuity. Shouldn't we tell these stories so future generations understand the value of thinking differently? As the final battle sequences fade, we return to the same Pacific sky. The camera shows a P-38 banking smoothly with its flaps partially lowered, sunlight glinting off its aluminium skin, trailing white vapour. In the distance, a zero tries to match the turn and fails. The narrator concludes, a stupid wire trick turned the P-38 Lightning into a lethal dancer and gave American pilots a fighting chance. It was not magic, but understanding of physics, courage to experiment, and a piece of wire. Let this story remind us that even in the darkest of times, creativity can shine. This video is purely educational and documentary. It contains no ideology or propaganda.